Before we begin, let's first enable the Properties tab by going in the View tab and then clicking the Properties button. If you don't like where the Properties tab is placed, you can simply click and then drag it anywhere else you want. I usually like it on the left side. Alright, now, what even is the Properties tab? Well, it's basically a window that shows you all the information about a selected instance. So, if we select the Spawn Location instance, we can see a lot of information about the Spawn Location instance. If we, for example, select the Terrain instance in the Explorer tab, we can see it has its own unique properties. Same goes for Workspace, Players, Lighting, Replicated First, Starter GUI, and literally every other instance in Roblox Studio. Alright, now let's spawn in a part so that we can learn about the properties. Now that you have your part, we can see on the left side that it, that it has a lot of different properties. And you might be wondering what even is a property? So basically, a property is a piece of information that makes instances do specific things. So, for example, if I change the brick color property from medium stone gray to, for example, this really blue color, we can see that the color actually has changed. <laughs> Same goes if I, for example, change the material property from plastic to, for example, marble. As you can see, the material has changed. So, keep in mind that the left side of a property is the name of that property and the right side of a property is the value of that property. So, for example, the material property has the name material and its value is marble. The cast shadow property has, has the name cast shadow and its value is true. You might be wondering, what, how does that make sense? Isn't the value supposed to be checkmark? Well, let me explain. So values in Roblox are basically pieces of information. And that piece of information can be literally anything. So, for example, your phone is a value, the numbers on your screen are, are a value, your TV is a value, the brand of clothes you're wearing is a value, and literally anything can be a value. But in Roblox Studio, there are specific types of values. And I will tell you probably the three most important ones. So keep in mind the number value, the string value, and the boolean value. The number value is used by properties that only have one single number. So for example, reflectance uses the number value, transparency uses the number value, and root priority uses the number value. You might be wondering, why isn't the size a number value? Well, as I said, Properties with only one number use number value. And because the size uses actually three numbers, which is actually a vector tree value, isn't a number value. Next is the string value, and this is used by the name property. And strings are basically any amount of text. And lastly, boolean values are these check marks. And booleans have two different types. They can be true or they can be false. And, for example, in the cast shadow property, the boolean is set to true, as you can see by the checkmark right here. But if I turn off the checkmark, you can see that now the boolean is set to false. If you don't understand these values, well, don't worry, I'll explain them again in a future video, where you will actually be using them. Alright, now, let's go through some of these properties that are used by parts. Firstly, Let's actually move the part up a bit, so that we can better see. Now, let's go one by one. Brick color, well, I already gave you an example, but basically just that this just allows you to change the color of your part. The cast shadow property is, well, it's pretty self-explanatory. If you turn this off, your part won't have a shadow anymore. And if you turn it on, your part will have a shadow. Next is the color property. And this is basically the same as the brick color property. But with the color property, you can actually set the color, you can actually set very specific colors. And as you can see down here, you can use the RGB colors or HTML colors. Now, let's check material property. 
Well, this I already shown you, but if you change the material of the material property, you will get a specific material for your part. Now, the reflectance property, and this basically allows your part to be shiny. So if we turn this all the way up to 1, which is 100% reflectance, you can see uh, that it doesn't work. And that's actually intended, because some materials actually can't use the reflectance property. So let's go back to the plastic material, and now you will see that the part is actually very shiny. Next up is the transparency property. As the property says, allows you to change the transparency of your part from 0% all the way up to 100%. And if you set the transparency to 0.5, the transparency of the part will be 50%. Now let's check the size property. This is, well, it's pretty self-explanatory. It basically allows you to scale your part without using the scale tool. And the size property actually uses three numbers, the X, Y, and Z number. You can also change the X, Y, Z values individually by opening the size property, or if you're more experienced, you can simply change that inside the size property directly. So if I want to, for example, change the X value from 4 to 8, then I will have to change the first value of the size property. And as you can see, the X value actually changed from 4 to 8, even though I didn't use the X value directly. And same goes for all the other axes, as you can see. Now position. It's basically the same as size in terms of putting in values, but Instead of changing the size of your part, this changes the position of your part. So if you, for example, put 0, 10, 0, my part will go back to the center of the world and it will be in the sky. And same goes for, for orientation. If I change the x-axis by 45, that the part rotated on the x-axis by 45 degrees. Next, we have the can collide property. And this is pretty important. It's pretty self-explanatory, but if you turn this off, your part won't collide with anything. So if we press play, well actually if we press run, you can see that the part will fall to the ground. But if you want the part to stay in the air, we have to make sure the anchored property is enabled. So click the anchored property, and now your part will stay in the air. as you can see. And you can also go through it because the can collide property is set to false. And also if you want to change the shape of your part to something else without placing a new part, you can do so by changing by changing the shape priority from block to anything else. For example, corner wedge. And now my part is a corner wedge. And now let's enable can collide off and turn off anchored. And once you press play, we can see that the part is actually moving around. And lastly, I give you another challenge. I want you to now go back to your house that you made in challenge 1, and I want you to now give it a little bit more detail, such, a, such as color, material, add windows, maybe even change the shapes of some of your bricks, and then post the final image in hashtag creations in my discord server. And make sure to type the message ch hashtag challenge2. And now I saved the best part for last. If you liked the video, make sure to subscribe and hit the like button. And if you want to see more of these videos, make sure to turn on the notifications to be notified when I upload such videos again. Well, see you until next time.